Samsung isn't celebrating its 10th anniversary of the Galaxy S with just one phone, it's actually giving us four, including the Galaxy S10 Plus here, the Galaxy S10e, the regular Galaxy S10, and their very first 5G phone. With the S10 phones, Samsung has taken the very best of the Galaxy S9 and refined it, giving you extensive screen space and a much smaller package than you'd expect. There are those curved edges we love and extremely thin bezels that really pull you into an all-screen experience. Thankfully, there's no eyebrow-shaped notch on these phones that will interrupt your view of the screen. Instead, Samsung has amped up this expansive screen by cutting out a tiny hole for the front-facing camera to fit into the display, or in the case of the S10 Plus, an oval that fits in two lenses. Here's another big feature, an in-screen fingerprint reader that unlocks the phone when you press your finger to the target. This is a huge improvement over blindly searching for the S9's fingerprint reader on the back. The Galaxy S10 phones are the first to have Qualcomm's ultrasonic fingerprint technology, which uses sound waves to unlock the phone. Other phones with fingerprint readers use optical sensors, which are critiqued for being easy to fool. I didn't get a chance to set up my own fingerprint this time, but I will be all over that in my final review. These phones feel thin, light, and easy to hold. They have a headphone jack, water resistance, and wireless charging support. There's even a mode you can turn on to wirelessly share power that lets you charge another Qi-enabled device using the Galaxy S10's battery reserves. Don't worry, the phone stops sharing when you're down to 30%, so you won't completely run out of juice. By now you've probably noticed that the S10 phones come in flashy colors like flamingo pink, prism blue, prism green, and canary yellow, in addition to glossy white and black. The larger Galaxy S10 Plus also comes in white and black variants made with ceramic backs. Samsung says these are more durable than the regular glass backings. Unfortunately, you can't get every color in every country, but you should have at least one snazzy shade to choose from. Samsung cameras have always been a selling point, and this year, the Galaxy S10 Plus and E have a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, so you can take portrait mode shots. The S10 and S10 Plus now add a third camera to the back, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens with 2x zoom. You can toggle among the lenses from the camera app. All three have a 10 megapixel selfie camera on the front, but only the Plus model adds a second 8 megapixel camera for your portrait selfies. The 5G version we'll see later this year will have a 3D depth sensing camera on both the front and back, but it's for better portrait shots in AR, not for unlocking the phone like the iPhone's Face ID. If you like a little help lining up shots and optimizing settings, the S10 camera will let you turn on shot suggestions. This is brand new and it gives you guidelines for getting the best pick. AI software on board will also recognize the scene that you're looking at and apply lighting settings automatically to help make it look good. You can turn it off with a tap. If it's dark enough, the bright night setting will automatically kick in to enhance a low light scene. These S10 phones support HDR and UHD video recording, and there's a super steady video mode as well. Still with me? Good, because there's more. Our old friend Bixby is back, this time with some routines that you can program to automatically change your phone settings as you go about your day. So for example, it can turn on Spotify and turn off Wi-Fi when it senses that you're in your car. These phones are the first to come pre-installed with Samsung's new One UI software, which runs over Android 9. You care about this because it's Samsung's attempt to overhaul a previously cluttered Galaxy skin. One UI is supposed to help make navigation more one-handed, but I did notice that you still have to reach up to the top of the screen to engage the notifications shade. Still too early to say how One UI helps or hinders, but I will say that larger buttons do seem like easier targets for your fingers to hit. Okay, so how do you tell these new Galaxy S10 phones apart? Well, the Galaxy S10 5G, which we weren't allowed to turn on, is the largest of the bunch with a 6.7 inch screen, a 4500 milliamp battery, two cameras on the front and four cameras on the back, including that 3D depth sensing camera we talked about. It will have 256 gigabytes of storage, eight gigabytes of RAM and no external storage. Next comes the S10 Plus with a 6.1 inch screen and those two cameras on the front. There's a 4100 milliamp battery, and you can buy it in 128, 512, and even one terabyte storage options with expandable storage up to 512 gigabytes. 
The regular S10 has a 6.1 inch screen and one main selfie cam. The S10e screen drops down to a 5.8 inch display. All the Galaxy S10s run on the Snapdragon 855 processor. Finally, we get to the money question. How much do they all cost and when can you buy them? You'll fork out $1,000 for the Galaxy S10 Plus, $900 for the S10, and $750 for the S10e. Those three musketeers will go on pre-order February 21st, and you'll get a free pair of new Galaxy Buds as a gift. They all sell in stores on March 8th. But if it's the 5G Galaxy S10 you're after, you're going to have to wait a little while longer. In the US, it'll come exclusively to Verizon in the second quarter before coming to other carriers. Pricing is still unknown. This was just a very brief taste of all four new Galaxy S10 devices, but we're going to dig in with a full review coming up soon. Thank you.